We're at the Wellfield Botanic Gardens. Join me and my friend, Director Eric Garden. We'll be discussing a book that's called New Expressions in Origami by Mayor MacArthur. We're gonna check out Origami in the Garden, presented by the Community Foundation of Elkhart County. It was our first traveling exhibit at Wellfield Botanic Gardens. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. Welcome to the Wellfield Botanic Gardens and we have a first of a kind of show that ever has ever taken place at the Wellfield Botanic Gardens. Our book today is called New Expressions in Origami Art by Meyer MacArthur and I'm here with Eric Garden and he is our guide. He's taking us through this wonderful exhibit. So Eric, let's start with the first yeah. one. This is our first stop today. Yeah. This is called Hero's Horse. And if you're into Greek mythology, you might know that this is a Pegasus. And some of the mythology behind the Pegasus is where it scratches its hoof, oh, a freshwater yeah. spring rises up. So we are here and it's mm. been placed in the spring garden. And it's a mm. fantastic location. And uh, really important to remember, all of these pieces were inspired by actual origami paper pieces that have been cast in museum quality metals. Yes, and this is the first one today. And it's almost like we could say, maybe there was a horse here scratching uh, thousands of years ago to start the springs here. We actually have 21 sculptures in 16 locations, and we're gonna check out a few of those today. Let's do it, let's get going. Sounds All good. Right? This piece is called Botanical Piece 2. It's hand-painted, fabricated aluminum done by the exhibit's creator, Kevin Box. He's done all this fine, hand-painted, beautiful colors on here, and there's some find-its in here. So this is about finding things like this Ooh, butterfly, right this origami butterfly, and there's another, another one here. One. Yes. So this is a fun one for kids, but it's really talking about the relationships between plants and animals, which we have a lot of here we at Wellfield. Certainly do. So it's yes. a great fit here along the North Promenade, and we have two of these standing cranes. This one's called Botanical Peace. Here's another exciting one, and it's my favorite. Tell us about this This one. is a beautiful piece. It's called Rising Piece, and it is a display of origami cranes. And these are one of the, the older, more traditional origami sculptures. Cranes have become known as a symbol of peace around the world, and we're just so happy to have it here on the Island Garden. It's a peaceful place. It's been a, a very popular sculpture in the exhibit. Here is a crane. This is beautiful. Another one of my favorites. This is definitely one of my favorites. And what makes this one very special? It's called Flying Piece. It is one of the most complex pieces of origami ever believed to be created. And the artist who made the origami originally, his name is Robert J. Lang. Mm -hmm. He is a NASA physicist who uses origami in his, in his job, and he is now, he's a world-renowned origami master. But the hundreds of folds that this crane yes. took, all from a single uncut square of paper. That's the Wonderful. really important part to remember, that all of these pieces that we're showing, they're all from that single uncut square, and then they've been lost wax cast, this yes. one with stainless steel, into this beautiful vertical piece. And, what a backdrop behind us. 
We can see flowers, two other water. pieces from here. There's one floating called Paper Navigator and there's Rising Peace out on the island. This is just one of my favorite spots and it's just such a, a lovely sighting of it right here. It's such a treasure, it truly yeah. is. Yeah. What a work of art and that man was a genius. Absolutely, <laughs> he, he, he thinks differently than, than, than I most do, people. that's for sure. Yes. He, he invented this design himself, Yes. Well, very complex. It's so exciting, there's more to see, let's, so let's go. All right. Why is origami introduced into the garden at this time in its history? That's a, that's a great question. So in 2020, we opened the Japanese inspired island garden. Yes. And with that was to come origami in the gardens exhibit. With the pandemic in 21, having a big effect all across our country and across the world, we decided to push this back. But it was really to help augment the year of the Island Garden 2020. That was our, our theme in 2020. And so we have in 2021, the year of peace. And you've maybe noticed a theme with some of our stops and the titles of these. It's all about peace and it's all about calm and being introspective. And as an artist, like Kevin Box, creating these beautiful works yes. inspired by origami. And this one is simply telling the story of a piece of paper that wants to become oh, an airplane. It is. And so you can see each of uh -huh. the independent folds leading from the flat piece, the two-dimensional piece at the bottom into a three-dimensional object. And then of course, all of these cast in metal, you have that three-dimensional, just a, a blank, but all from the blank canvas yes. of a single sheet of paper. And children can come out with their single sheet of paper and That's try right. to do That's some right. folding. And I bet there would be one that will actually do it the first we've, time. We've had a lot of people inspired uh, by this exhibit and that's been a fast, uh, fantastic side effect, yes. uh, is getting people excited and thinking about what they can make. And really, when you think about that single piece of paper, you know, that we can write a story on and we can write great works of art in that way, but to know that they can also be folded right. and sculpted and with some of the pieces that we have in this origami in the garden exhibit you see some of the true masterpieces of artists like Robert J. Lang and Michael G. LaFosse and Beth Johnson from Ann Arbor, Michigan, you know, someone locally in this yes. region that have all helped inspire this exhibit. Well you know in the book that we chose um, this time does contain pictures of some of the works of the artists Absolutely. you've mentioned, plus international artists. And we've chosen some pictures from the book. Yeah. And some of them are uh, copies, imitations of fruit or shiitake mushrooms. And there's one on uh, Harry Potter. And uh, some of them are just magnificent. The way people use their hands to create from one single sheet a work of art. It's, it's tremendous. You see, you get to learn. That book is really a beautiful book and it talks about the different methods that the artists use. I, I learned from it, I wasn't aware that they use wet folding. So in many of the artists actually make their own paper. So it's all about plant fibers, right? That's how you make paper. And certain plant fibers behave in certain ways, but if they're wet before it's dried, they can just make such amazing shapes and more importantly textures that you can't get sometimes with just a, a dry flat sheet of paper. And so the creativity is limitless uh, only by the artists themselves. And in that book, you'll see things oh, that you never don't would. look like paper at all. Right. It's absolutely they, incredible. They're fabulous yeah. pictures yeah. and fabulous uh, display of art by yeah. different people from different countries. That's doing right, I think, I think 11 different countries yes. and five continents yes. actually represented yes. in that book. Now you're probably wondering, are they ever gonna cook on this show today? Well, we have devised a nice little Japanese picnic that you're going to share with us at the end of the show. So don't think we have thrown food out today. We haven't, we just are presenting it in a different way. But now I think it's time to go on to the next piece of art. That's right. All right. Let's go cool. see. Let's go. Right. And 
here we have the children's garden and bison in the children's garden right here with these native plants, right? That's cover, right. Cover that was, meadows. That was one of the reasons that we chose this location for white bison. So the origami in the garden sculpture. This one was a collaboration between Kevin Box and Robert J. Lang, a very talented, world-renowned origami artist. This one is what they call duogami. So the paper on either side of the origami paper is a different color. And you can really see how the back end of the bison got one side of the, the yeah. colored paper and then the front half the other side. And of course, in an ode to peace, we have the crane oh, atop yes. the bison. But it's yeah. very important. Uh, and this was part of the education and the reason we had this in the children's garden. This is our prairie wildflower mounds. And so these are all natives. They are uh, native to Indiana. And of course, bison occurred all across the plains and they were drawn to prairies. So this is one of those things across the plains and here in the Midwest, bison were a common occurrence. So we're really excited. This to is very this real. One. It's exactly yep. the way it was. And these and will actually continue to get taller. And mm. if we were here in a couple months, they'll actually be taller than us. Taller than us, taller than the bison. That's right. But you know, I like to say this is the garden that's the energy center of right. the garden yep. because the children are here and the children have a lot of energy and they love to come and play and to see the various sculptures yeah. here in the garden as well. Yeah, so, the children's garden is just a gorgeous place to be. And will we see some blossoms on these yeah, plants? Yeah, these are just getting started. So mid to late summer, these are really in their peak. So every time you come to the garden, something new is happening, something else is blooming, something else is dying, but it keeps on keeping on and it gives us so much pleasure. So I just think it's a great spot. I think this is a great sculpture because it is so true to our past. And you know, we'd like to move on to our very last presentation. So follow us and we're going over to another piece sculpture. Come on with us. And now we're at the piece de resistance, I think, of the gardens, emerging peace. And this has been sort of like the whole concept of this show. And I know Eric can tell you so much more about it than I, but there's a story here, so pay attention. I love this piece. So this tells the story very simply, the life cycle of a butterfly. Yes. But it's so much more than that. So where we see the egg resting on a leaf. Mm -hmm. And then we see a caterpillar that has the capability to devour an entire plant as it grows and consumes. And at the cellular level, it's changing. And then it goes through a period of rest as a chrysalis before emerging as a beautiful butterfly. And Kevin Box, having made this piece, talks about those changes and the, the consumption. It's, it's very thoughtful uh, the way he's likened this to the things that go on in our world. Yes. But I like to also think of it as what has happened here at Wellfield when we talk about the base being a plant yes. that had just the little seed, the egg of an idea mm -hmm. that has grown us into what we are. And we've gone through times of great growth. Yeah. So as that caterpillar grows and chews and devours an entire plant and gets bigger on a daily basis to then periods of rest, to be more contemplative as a chrysalis, waiting, planning our next move yeah. as internally changes are happening to us. 
and then to be able to emerge as a beautiful butterfly. I like to think of us in that stage where gift. we're always returning and from that the cycle begins again. Yes. From the beautiful butterfly another egg is laid and we get that idea, that seed that starts something anew. You really have tied it all together. The uh, gardens, this, well, what the it, beginning of the right. gardens that's and right. the development, and it was slow at times. Yeah. You know, we did yeah. rest. We had to, but you know, to make sure we produce what that's we right. had to do. That's right. But when you think about it, when you're thinking about peace, it doesn't happen overnight. No. It takes no. a lot of preparation yeah. and patience, and so I, I think this is a real symbol of the theme of the gardens and what it was like to have this yeah. exhibit here. And uh, I just think it's, it's a must have. Yeah. I, I just think it's great. Now tell us more about what's going to happen. Yeah, so along those lines, uh, one of our very generous donors, uh, anonymous at this time, has decided to purchase a casting uh, that will come from the artist for this piece to remain in our garden in perpetuity. So not only is it a beautiful symbol of what we've come through and we continue to go and change and evolve as a garden, but it also tells that very simple story of the life cycle of a butterfly, which is important for a lot of kids to learn that are learning in school. So we'll actually be able to talk about that for generations yeah. to come through this beautiful origami in the garden sculpture by Kevin Box. Well, in this, this garden, this special garden, was you know two years almost three in the making waiting for nature to calm down yep. and stepping right in to this which symbolizes everything about peace and right. and how it has to be nurtured right. and this is going to go in the peace garden that's correct so that is a, a garden to be built yes so it's for the future and this was sort of like the beginning of the future yeah. Before we go to our picnic, we want to go to the sensory garden and just show you the kinds of herbs and vegetables that are planted here. And then we'll go on to the pavilion for our Japanese picnic. We'll be right back. But we talk about food as art and art as art, but particularly this segment, it's about the food, isn't it? That's right. So here we are in the sensory garden at yes. Wellfield. We have all these whole raw foods around us. We've got some chives back there, some French sorrel. We've got oh, you've all got kinds everything. of leafy greens over here Peppers. and mint. We have some fruits on the trees over there that are starting to come in. Tomatoes. And I just love that this all leads back to that idea of origami being a simple, taking a simple piece of paper and folding, folding it into something and sculpting it into a piece of art. That's a lot of what we do with food. Yes, we do. I always think of sushi as being something that is beautiful art. It is beautiful and, art. And then we can see other little oh, we've got lovely fruits like berries this. we've got some wild strawberries, wild strawberries some yes. fragaria. And mint, you have all That's kinds right. of herbs. That's right. This is just a delightful garden and you can smell it, you can feel it and that's kind of leading us on to the last segment, isn't it? That is. And we're going to be going over, we want over to the pavilion where we're inviting you to have a picnic with us. We've got a few surprises. Stay with us. And in the meantime, let's take a look at some more pictures from this beautiful, beautiful book. And we'll be right back. So after that wonderful tour here at the Wellfield Gardens, it's time to have a little picnic, a Japanese picnic. And Eric, let's talk about what we're having. Here's some noodles. A noodle soup using the ramen noodles and chicken broth and garlic and uh, ginger 
and you're going to demonstrate how to eat a noodle with I, a chopstick. I think the real key for when you're doing Japanese food, always, 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 and it's okay to pick up your yes. uh, pick up your bowl. And that's how you do it. That's fantastic. Is it good? Nice. Good. It's such a refreshing thing to have out it here on a day fun. like today. It is fun. It really is. A little green, a little egg, and then we have some Japanese tea, cold tea in a can. Wonderful. And then sushi here uh, that is so popular now in the United States. Of course, I like it with the vegetables, and you, you're a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian, so. but for sushi, I will be happy to have some, a lot of raw fish in there. That's all about, well, all about that. But you won't have any today. So that's the story, Japanese dishes, and it's been a pleasure. I'm so glad you joined us, and Eric, it's always wonderful to work with Thank you. Thank you so much again for coming out. It's a beautiful place. I'm glad we got to experience it together today. I always, am always a pleasure. True. It is always a pleasure. So thank you for watching. Stay with us. And uh, we'll see you next time. Good food, good friends, good books, good sushi, good green tea makes for a very good life. See you next time. Cheers. We've talked about Wellfield Botanic Garden as a place of peace, meditation, contemplation, where you can come on your own and just sit and think about your life and enjoy the scenery. So we're doing that right now, and I feel so rested. I feel so peaceful. How do you feel? When you've got a view like this, there's not a care in the world. That's this is a great right. spot to be. So being able to be here in this contemplative space having talked about this exhibit in 2021, the year of peace at Wellfield, yes. and getting to look back on the Japanese island garden, it's just a wonderful spot to be. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.